How do you actually market your MSP correctly so you never run out of customers? My name is Harrison Barron from growth-generators.com. We help MSPs grow, whether that is from marketing to sales training, even some business operations. We have been super fortunate to help tons of you guys reach out and I have some crazy episodes coming up this week. But I wanna talk about the biggest problem with MSP sales and that is how to actually sell them. Because us as MSP people, we understand the benefits of cybersecurity, making sure your entire system runs the way it's supposed to, and everything in between. But where we lack the, pr the problem really is, and where we lack the knowledge, is we know what the customer needs, but we really struggle with showing the customer what they actually need. You see, most businesses in today's day and age, and I say most because there are plenty of businesses that still have internal IT teams, but there isn't a business under the sun that can't benefit from a expert in IT, right? And how is it that there's some businesses that are growing like crazy, especially in the MSP world, and then there's other businesses who really struggle with sales. Well, today I am breaking out the fancy whiteboard to really talk about and kind of visualize how we really need to go about selling MSP services. Because after this video, you will know all of the secret sauce to how actually to sell somebody something, especially when it comes to the MSP world. Because we're not selling normal stuff. We're not selling nutri or supplements. We're not selling chemicals. I have obviously Windex for the whiteboard. We're not selling any of that. We're selling a service. And in most cases, a lot of people may never see us or our interactions are almost exclusively virtual, whether that's a phone call, a FaceTime, or just emails back and forth as we troubleshoot. So how do we actually go about conveying all of this to the customer? Well, the first thing is I'm gonna draw up here is a dollar sign, right? Because ultimately I'm gonna draw it off to the right. We wanna get to the money. That's where we wanna get to. We wanna get to the sales so we can continue to build a bigger business. And we are over here and, you know, after tons of time in art school, I know that you guys might be jealous of my very, very lifelike drawings, but we, we are here, right? And we wanna to get to here, the sale. But the problem is, is there is a major, major disconnect between us and the client and and getting from a, point a to point b is just simply not happening and it kind of stinks because you have done the hard work you've made the cold calls you've made the connections you've gone out networking you've done all of the sales activities and then you meet with the person and we never quite get to the sale it's really disheartening. So let's fix all of this because believe it or not, it's not nearly as bad as you think it is. But the problem is, is obviously making this bridge from us to an actual sale. So the first thing that we need to do and we need to understand is the customers, right? I'm gonna write C up here for customer and the customer pain, right? We need to go find that pain point or pain points. Now, in this case, right, those pain points could be anything from, you know, wasted time to computer issues to really anything, right? Maybe it's cybersecurity, right? And we're worried about cybersecurity and, or better yet, the client's worried about cybersecurity. Now, they might know that they have these problems, but they're never gonna tell you because they're technically, they, I shouldn't say they're technically, they're afraid. We as MSP people are coming in and we are trying to sell them something, right? At the end of the day, yeah, you have to make sales and the customer knows that. So how do we actually get here to the money with the customer pain? There's a couple different things that we have to begin to think about before we actually go into and find this pain. And the first thing that we have to do is when we meet with this customer, I'm going to draw another unbelievably lifelike and realistic image of a, our customer here. I'm just going to write a C for customer underneath. We have this person down here, and this is all of their issues. I'm just going to draw those little thought bubbles here all around. 
right? They have these issues. The customer has these issues and we're over here and the customer has all the money. So how do we actually get through? Well, the first thing that we actually have to do is, and this sounds super crazy, but hear me out. We have to be presentable, right? I think it's crazy. that most people don't take customers seriously. Believe it or not, I cannot tell you how many people I've had conversations with that are completely ill-prepared for dealing with a customer. And I know this might sound super crazy. Get a haircut, go and clean shaven, prepare, understand who your target customer is because the more you know, and the better, more well-prepared you can become or be before you go into that, the better you are going to present yourself. Remember, even if it's not your business, you still are representing a business. And that business's goal is to go get a sale, to make more money. Now, the first thing is, I, I can't believe I have to say this, but you gotta be presentable, right? You gotta be able to present well, and you have to present yourself and the company well. Now, the second thing, if you've made it this far, I hope you're hitting the like button, that subscribe button, and that notification bell. But the second, and probably the most important thing, is you have to ask questions, right? And I'm just gonna write, just gonna abbreviate here. You have to ask good questions. You see, most people ask what is called a closed-ended question. It's typically answered with yes or no. If you've ever watched a legal show, you'll realize that the, the person in the stand, and I don't know all the legal terms, so I apologize, but the person that's being questioned has to answer. Now, they can answer with simply a yes or no, or they can choose to elaborate. Now, if you ask somebody, are you having a good day? It is a simple yes or no. That doesn't help us. The thing is, is we have to figure out, we have to be able to locate all of these pain points that are buried deep inside of our client's head. So before we even think about question, we have to start to expand our question. We wanna ask open-ended questions. And open-ended questions are going to be the key for our success when it comes to an MSP sale. You see, most customers are not quite prepared to deal with really good salespeople. They usually think, oh, I'll watch the presentation, I'll answer a couple questions, and then I'll shoo them away. Well, we don't want to be shooed away. We want to be assassins with sales and get really good at them so we can always predict where the next sale is going to come. So in here with questions, we have to have some sub bullets down below. We want to ask open-ended questions. So I'm going to write down here, open-ended questions, right? We have to ask those. And those questions are going to say, are going to be similar to, what kind, of, what kind of IT or technical problems are you guys having in your organization? Remember, the customer knows that they have all the money. They don't always wanna be honest with you. So not only do you have to ask open-ended questions, but we might even have to go a little deeper. But before I go any deeper, I wanna start giving you some ideas of open-ended questions. What, I know that you guys have a bunch of printers in the office. Which printer gives you the hardest time and when? Right, and they're gonna say, oh, that brother printer over there, no shame against brother, that brother printer over there is the worst printer on the planet. It's always acting up. Or that HP or that Konica Minolta, it doesn't matter. They are gonna start talking and we wanna start asking more open-ended questions. We want them to start accidentally talking about what their problems actually are when it comes down to these things. So not only do we have to ask open-ended questions, but we have to then take it even one step further. And this is what the best salespeople do, and I hope I've earned a like button at this point. But not only do we have to ask open-ended questions, but we have to assume at every stage, the client is lying to us. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. When you go, or if you've ever been arrested, I have not, but if it ever happens, you, or if you've watched any TV show with police officers, the first thing that police officers do is isolate people so that way they can get stories on both ends. 
The thing is, is customers are not prepared to go into detail or in depth when they're talking to you. And you have to get them talking to give you that feedback. Now we've talked about those open-ended questions, but we need more and specifically more details when it comes to those questions. So I'm going to say we need to, we need to start asking for detail questions. Now, not only are these detailed questions, and you may have heard me say quantify, but we kind of need to quantify. We need to show the customer. Now, it doesn't always have to be about money. It could be about time or it could be about effort or problems, but we have to quantify it. And those, 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 that, that answer that we're looking for is going to come from detailed questioning, really asking. So we're going to go through, right? We have to be presentable. We have to ask good questions. We have to ask open-ended questions. And then we have to ask detail-oriented questions where now we're going through and we're, we're obviously showing up. We're going to ask, hey, how are you doing today? What's going on? You know, what seems to be the technical problems? What, what, what is your biggest nightmare when it comes to your organization? And you can start to plant little seeds. Typically, most clients share with us that their software is always giving them a hard time, their printers are always giving them a hard time, or even worse, and this one blows my mind, but sometimes employees are getting up out of their chairs to go help other employees, which means there's two people completely not doing any work. I don't really know if that if you guys fall into that category, but I'd love to ask you guys some questions, right? Oh yeah, actually, you know what? We can't stand when employees get out of their chair. It really drives us crazy. Please, could you tell me a little bit more about that? What does that actually mean? I would love for you to give me some more description as you're hopefully writing in your CRM, Customer Relationship Manager, Go High Level is my favorite, but you really wanna start focusing on those detailed questions because how do they feel? Does it drive you crazy or what is it like or what typically, what problems are they addressing, right? Or what, who's getting up? Why are they getting up? Is this a reoccurring thing or is this just a one-off type thing that you saw and it kind of made a little note in the back of your mind? And then stop talking. You want them to then start to feed you information, which is going to be the customer pain points. Now these customer pain points I just wrote up here could be whatever it is, but they are going to start word vomiting like crazy to you. And you better fire up your little fingers and type or write down notes as fast as you possibly can. Because the next thing that they are going to give you, and I am going to once again, wow you with my drawings, but the next thing that they are going to give you is a big old, this is absolutely probably the worst thing in the world, but they are giving you all of the goodies. In this case, the bag of gold you are looking for. They don't even realize that they are handing over, and this is supposed to be like a satchel, but that little satchel, that little coin purse of all of the nuggets that you need to identify their problems. And that now gives you the firepower to go get the money. Now, if you've made it this far, like I said, like button, subscribe button, notify, but take a little screenshot of this because I'm about to wipe it all away because we are not done adding tremendous value to this video. Give you guys one, two, three. All right, we're diving through here. Now that we've kind of figured out, right, we have these we presentable, we've asked questions, we've asked open-ended questions, we've asked detail-oriented questions, we've gotten all of this, right? The next thing that we need to do, whatever that customer says, the customer doesn't buy solutions. I know that sounds crazy. Let me say that again so you fully understand it. The customer does not buy solutions. What they want to know is the benefits to them. What are the benefits that they're going to get if they give you this money and they put it in your pocket? What happens next? What can they expect? They don't care that you're going to roll out static IPs or put out separate networks or, upload or, or put on the best cybersecurity. They don't care. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. They want to know what are the benefits for them. 
This is where you take all of these, right? So if it's cybersecurity, what is the benefit? The benefit is you don't have to worry about X, Y, Z problem. You don't have to worry about an attack. You don't have to worry about dealing with Russian hackers. You don't have to worry about getting Bitcoins and sending them over to some random person and hoping with a small percentage chance they even release your information. They don't care about that. They just want to know the benefit for them. They're going to be able to sleep at night. They're going to know their business isn't going to get hacked. They don't have to worry about their system being leaked on the internet and losing trust in the public's eye. You need to sell to the benefits of this customer where you come into play and you start addressing one by one by one. If that is unproductive employees, you can rest easy knowing that your employees aren't gonna be getting up out of their chair, or if they are, you know it's not because of a tech-related problem, and then you as management or the owner or whoever you are can then investigate why employees are just frolicking around the water cooler. This is the true, true way that you are going to get that sale. They want to know that you are going to provide the benefits. You obviously have the solution. You wouldn't be there otherwise. They want to know what benefits they're getting by giving you tons and tons of money every single month, which is what we do. We sell on a monthly recurring revenue basis. We charge them every single month. We get paid every month and we give them the benefits every single month. So, for example, if it's cybersecurity, you're gonna rest easy at night knowing that your system isn't gonna be hacked or you're not gonna have to deal with Russian hackers. If it's work productivity, you're gonna know that your system is running correctly. And if there is an issue, an employee can simply file a ticket. It takes no more than 30 seconds. We're gonna receive it on our end and we're gonna start addressing it almost immediately, preventing them from getting up and going and talking to other employees. If it's printer issues, if it's network issues, you already know the benefit to the customer, but you have to frame it as a benefit to them over and over and over again. And I know this sounds crazy, but after you actually close the deal, you can't stop selling. You always have to be showing the benefit. And time and time again, it's gonna be benefit. That's an N. You want to keep driving these benefits home over and over and over again because you might bring a new customer on. You might get to that point, you've gone through the whole sales process, you ask really good questions, they see that you're asking good questions, they understand the benefits that they're going to get, they give you the money, everything's all good, you take a second, you hit the like button, and then they, they pay you. But now after they pay you, it might be 3, 6, 9, 12, 24 months and they might say, you know what? Are we really getting the benefit? Are we really, is it really worth the money? You always have to be showing the customer the benefits that you're providing so that way you can keep that customer. For example, your car. You know your car will get you from point A to point B, hopefully. That is the benefit. The car is self I don't want to say, it's consistently reminding you of the benefit. You can get in the car and go wherever you need to go, whether it's the grocery store to see a client, whatever it may be. You know that you're going to go in, start it, hopefully it starts on the first try, and the benefit is you don't have to walk there, you don't have to call an Uber, you don't have to take public transport. That's the benefit of a car, but your clients aren't always remembering you or remembering what you actually do. So every time, every QBR, quarterly business review, every few months, maybe it's CCing your customer or your single point of contact on your communications, this is going to be the secret sauce to keeping those clients. There's more to it than that, but this is probably the number one reason not only do MSPs not close deals, but it's also probably the number one reason, actually I should say that's the number one reason that you don't close deals, but it's probably one of, if not the number one reason that you lose clients is because you are not showing them the benefits that you are consistently providing to them every single month. And I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I will give you guys a second a screen grab if you wanna grab anything so you can write some notes down, but hopefully you found some massive, massive value in this. I love getting up, I love making these videos. I love, or 
drawing things in my absolute, um, look, I'm not going to sell it, but you know, I happen to be pretty good at art. Other than that, I love the heck out of you guys, as always. Check out the links down below, and I will see you guys on the next video. Till then.